Good morning and welcome to the show and Happy New Year. I'm here with Detective Paul Vecker from the Bay County Sheriff's Office and we're going to talk a little bit about fraud in the new year. Detective Vecker, thanks. Vecker, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> Don, good seeing you again. It's good to be seen. And Happy I'm New so Year sorry. to you, my friend. Yeah, Happy New Year to you. I know we talked once before about fraud over the holiday mm -hmm. season and uh, there are really, some of these criminals are really ingenious in the way they can rip you off now, particularly with technology. There really are. There is a, in a, this past year, uh, Bay County got really hit badly, but the, the rest of the country also did. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about maybe totally uh, nationwide over $21 billion in fraud in reference to credit card fraud. It is just absolutely incredible what's going on. And one of the things that's happening, of course, Don, as we talked before the program a little bit, is that uh, what is happening is the credit card industry is changing. October the 15th of this year, all credit cards must have a chip in there. No and more magnetic strip. No more magnetic. And what's going to happen is merchants that uh, have not set up their new POS and terminals and all that, the banks are going to hold them responsible for any fraud that happens. It will not, it will not fall back on the bank any longer if the merchants do not get new terminals. And without those new terminals, there's going to be a lot of merchants that are going to be, going to be hurting. So that's why the industry is notified everyone last year in 2013 that this was coming and now I mean in 2014 and in 2015 of October uh, it's all got to be in place. Now what makes the chip safer than the magnetic strip? Well the magnetic strip it, you can download the information uh, quickly uh, by using just a regular uh, $75 skimmer that you get on the internet where the chip is more protected you have to have a pin number it's got your signature and all that but yet you're gonna have to have a terminal to go and place it in there and that more secure. The only time that you will not be doing that is if a bank were to call you or someone that you know calls you uh, and needs some information, then you can give them the credit card over the phone but, and you will get a receipt. Wherein sometimes when you do things over the phone, you don't get a receipt at all with a regular card. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's gonna be one of the things. And of course, a lot of the criminals in the last year or so, they know this is coming. It's going to be more difficult for them because with the chip, it's going to be much safer. Uh, the Europeans have been using it for a number of years. Uh, the Chinese have been using it. The reason in here in this country it's taking so long is because there's so many ATMs that have to in the banks that have to have new terminals be put right. in, and it's, it's a costly factor. And each chip is going to can, uh, uh, I think it's going to be approximately twenty dollars per chip. Uh, per card. So it's going to be an expensive um, situation for the banks. But in the long run, it's going to protect us better. You know, and I've been a victim of that myself, and I think I told you off camera. Uh, one day I went, uh, a couple years ago, I went to go get some gas, and my debit card didn't work. And I was like, what the heck's with this thing? Mm -hmm. And I used a credit card, got my gas, went on my mm -hmm. way, and then went on to find out that my, my bank accounts were emptied out. And it turned out someone had skimmed my card somewhere along the way. Could have been in a restaurant or anywhere you would right. present your debit card. Right. And uh, emptied out my bank from Cartagena, Colombia. Mm -hmm. So apparently, they're, they're not just stealing your money. They're stealing your information and then selling it to someone else. That is correct. Who then steals your money. That's exactly correct. And uh, we tell a lot of people and uh, even the bank uh, institutions and credit uh, bureaus know that we tell people, do not use a debit card if you're going through a fast food window. Because when you give your debit card to that individual, they may have a skimmer, take down that information, and you think everything's fine. And also, a debit card, you're, it's your money, where a credit card is the bank's money. And it takes longer to retrieve that money back into your account after you sign the affidavit of fraud with the bank. Mm -hmm. It takes about 10 days, sometimes longer. Where a credit card, they usually tell you right on the phone, hey, we're going to get you a new card, and all you have to do is come in, and you'll have your new card within two or three days on a credit card. Well, we've got to run off to the local weather, but on Absolutely. the other side of this break, let's talk about what we can do to protect ourselves from that type of fraud. You bet. We'll be right back after your local weather, brought to you by the West Pittman Law Firm. WestPittmanLawFirm.com. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Detective Paul Vecker from the Bay County Sheriff's Office, and we're talking about fraud and how you can protect yourself in the new year. Well, welcome back. You know, we have the best interviews during the break here, so um, maybe you can give us a few tips on what we can do to protect ourselves. I know debit cards are really a, uh, an issue. They truly really are. And, uh, there are just like, some places you shouldn't use them. Well, you shouldn't use them when you give the debit card and someone takes it out of your view. 
Uh, that's where the problem is. You got to keep it under your control, or you at have least to keep it under your control. And that's mm -hmm. why I mentioned just before we went on break in reference to going through drive-through windows at a restaurant like that. It's out of your view. They've got they've got the the handle on it, and you don't know what they're doing with mm -hmm. that particular card. So therefore, use use your credit card, and uh, you're going to be much safer on that. If something were to happen, you're using the bank's money, uh, which is going to be much easier to to sign an affidavit of fraud if something goes through. Uh, with a debit card, it's more difficult, and it takes longer to, to get your money uh, back. I mean, how many of us have handed our debit card over to a waiter, and they walk away with it, and Absolutely. you don't know what's going on with it? Uh, about five years ago, Don, there was a very nice couple who uh, ca came to visit Panama City Beach uh, from uh, Miami. They had never been here before. They heard so much about Panama City Beach. So she came. She was a businesswoman from down uh, South Florida, Miami area, and she brought her family up here. Uh, they went to several restaurants, they went to Pier Park, they went to a lot of places uh, uh, in Bay County. They even traveled over to Sandestin and all that area. When she got back home with her family, she went ahead to the ATM uh, with her debit card and there was no money in her account. Wow. Uh, she notified the bank down there and a lot of the transactions they found out were not used uh, uh, here in Bay County, but they were out from out of town allegedly. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we, uh, we got all the names of the places that she had been to, and uh, we finally located a, a, a restaurant that they had gone to several times, and uh, finally found out... Not in town here, but somewhere else. Somewhere else, and what had, what had mm -hmm. happened was uh, a female uh, waitress that worked there had contacted the authorities and said there was an individual that had a small item in his possession, and every time people had a debit card, he would swipe it. So the authorities were able to go ahead and backtrack that individual, get the information, and he was in fact arrested. But it was over nine thousand dollars that was uh, had been removed from her account. Uh, that just shows you that you have to be extremely careful. And she never thought about it at all whatsoever by giving your credit card or I mean your debit card yeah. to a waiter or something like that. She'd been to restaurants before; it's never happened. Mm -hmm. So it's very very dangerous to do that. Yeah, it, it only takes one time. It's, that, it's exactly yeah. correct, sir. And so using your, your and, and it's funny because people's impulses are to be good. Right. I mean, you want to pay your bill and you want to pay it right away. You don't want to get a bill at the end of the month from a credit card. Mm -hmm. So let me just put it on a debit card. It's just too easy to do. Yeah. Even buying gas. Even buying gasoline. Yeah. And unfortunately, some managers and owners of some service stations, they're not aware of it. But sometimes uh, the person that is uh, supplying the gasoline or uh, taking care of the pumps, sometimes they'll put a skimmer in there. That's mostly found, I hate to say this, but it's mostly found in further in southern parts of Florida, more so than in, this, in the northern part of Florida, but there's a, there's a lot of scams that happen like that. At, and you mentioned just before the, uh, the break that uh, you saw a charge on there, it could be a dollar or two dollars on there. Mm -hmm. When you see that charge and you know you didn't do that and you ask your wife, well, what's this from? She doesn't know. What is happening is someone has, has obtained your debit or credit card information and they're trying to find out how much money you have in your account. And that's why they, you have that charge on there. They're just trying to see how much money you so have. So they get account. a balance back when they make a small withdrawal. That's exactly like that. correct. And then they start using that particular card. And then they just bang it out from there. Exactly. And they can do that in a day. In one day, sir. Mm -hmm. it, it can happen. Yeah, it happened to me. One of the other things that is going on, and, and that's called the green dot card. Mm -hmm. The green dot cards are uh, items that you can get at uh, different uh, department stores or pharmacies. They have them right there in the open. You can purchase them. And you can put on any amount of money on there. Right. And what happens is this. Uh, a lot of people are receiving phone calls allegedly from the IRS stipulating that there's going to be a warrant issued for someone's arrest unless they pay a, a balance due. Uh, let's say about a year or two ago. And they do it with a green dot card. And they'll ask, they'll ask yeah. that individual to go ahead and purchase a green dot card, uh, maybe put $500 on three different cards up to totaling $1,500, and then call them back on a number that they give them, and they t ask you to give you the transaction number, get the transaction number off those cards and give it to them. Once they get those transaction numbers, all they have to do is call a toll-free number and ask whether or not that those cards have been activated and the person says yes they have been activated and what they do is they download those cards and, that, and they got fifteen hundred dollars and that and, money's gone and forever. the money and the money's gone and you never had a, a, a bad uh, situation with the IRS before 
and that really hurts. But they target a lot of the young people, Don, and they target a lot of the elderly people. Now, we're so out of time, it's not funny, but if people wanted to learn more about how to protect themselves, what could they do? Could they call you? Is there a Absolutely. website you can go to? You can contact the Bay County Sheriff's Office mm -hmm. at 747-4700. Uh, in fact, you can come into the lobby. Uh, if you're a victim of a, of a scam or something like that, mm -hmm. and we have free pamphlets that we give out at the Bay County Sheriff's Office, or contact your local law enforcement agency. A lot of, a lot of them have free brochures and information. Or you can get on the internet and get a lot of good data and a lot of good information yeah, off the Yeah, just do internet. a little Google search Absolutely. and say, hey, protect me from Protect fraud. yourself, you bet. Detective Paul Vecker, thanks so much for everything Don, you do to keep us safe. Always Thank a pleasure, sir. And we'll be right back after these messages. Hi, I'm David Lovett, and this is your Mad Hatter Minute. Almost all vehicles on the road today have a power braking system. The power brake system helps provide braking power so you don't have to do all the work with your legs and the brake pedal. The brakes themselves are applied at the wheel using hydraulic pressure. When we step on the brake pedal, we create pressure in the power booster that is multiplied by vacuum from the engine. The resultant pressure pushes brake fluid through the master cylinder into tubes and hoses that run to the brake at each wheel. If there's a problem with the power brake booster, your pedal usually gets extremely hard due to the lack of vacuum coming from the engine. If your pedal gets extremely soft or gets extremely mushy, that's an indication of another problem, usually a hydraulic leak. A leak gives pressurized fluid somewhere to go other than to the brakes, so stopping power is reduced lose enough fluid, and you can't stop at all. Of course, that can be very dangerous. Brake fluid also attracts moisture, which can lead to rust. Not a good thing for anti-lock brake systems. Also, water into the limes can be heated and create steam. When you create the steam, the hydraulic pressure is reduced, and your braking power is reduced as well. If you haven't had your brake fluid changed in a number of years, you might want to consider that. A final word, make sure you use the recommended brake fluid for your vehicle. Using the wrong type of brake fluid can result in total failure of the braking system. I'm David Lovett, and that has been your Mad Hatter Minute. Hey folks, this is Joshua Brown with Mad Hatter on 23rd Street. Is your check engine light on? If it is, text M-A-D-H-A-T-28, that's Mad Hat 28, to 24247, and we'll check it for free. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Dr. Ronald Johnson from Advanced Dermatology and Skin Care right here in Panama City. Dr. Johnson, thanks so much for coming on the show. Good morning. Yay. Um, it's the new year. Happy New Year, by Happy the way. Happy New Year. And uh, you got any New Year's resolutions that you could suggest for our skin? Sure. I always mm -hmm. got some things you can, you know, skin is one of those things that we sort of take for granted. We don't appreciate right. it until it, uh, something goes wrong or we have a problem with it. The best thing you can do for your skin in the new year for everyone is, one, uh, wear sunscreen. You know, the uh, best thing to do is wear sunscreen on a day-to-day -day basis. Cover the areas that you've got uh, on your face, your mm -hmm. neck, and, and on your upper chest area on men and women. Uh, women, it's a little easier nowadays. A lot of makeups and moisturizers have it built in. Sure. I think we're a lot more conscious of this stuff now, Correct. too. Uh, so sun mm -hmm. protection is the biggest thing and the best thing you do. And, and it's uh, sun damage is cumulative, which means it's uh, 10 minutes here, 5 minutes walking the dog, 20 minutes taking the you know, walk around the neighborhood, whatever the case may be. Over 20, 30, 40 years, you get thousands of hours of sun exposure without ever going to the beach. So right. I get a lot of patients who are like, well, I never go to the beach. It's like it doesn't matter. It's a lot of it's just sun damage. Driving in your car, a lot of sun windshields mm -hmm. and, and windows don't block 100% of ultraviolet rays. So if you're always sitting in the sun, whether it's at work or in your car, you're going to get sun exposure over years and years. It's going to add up. So sunscreen is going to be the number one thing you can do. Next thing you can do on, a, on at least a monthly basis is just check your skin. See if you've got any lesions that aren't healing, any scaly spots, any moles mm -hmm. that are changing, any new moles. Typically, melanoma will form a new mole two-thirds of the time, and then the other rest of the time, it'll form within or next to a prior mole. Mm -hmm. so, so basically, for the new years, you, you should check your skin. You know, just, just keep an eye on it, keep it moisturized, and above all, protect it from the sun. You know, I'm of a generation where I remember my sister's uh, sunbathing, and my sister used to put baby oil on and lay in the backyard and literally cook herself. 
Back right, then. they've got an increase. I mean, I've seen yeah. uh, 20 years old, 30 year olds with uh, yeah. sun related skin cancers like basal cells and squamous cells. Um, and, but even young people can get melanomas. Melanoma is one of the fastest growing cancers in the 20, upper 20 year old uh, mm -hmm. adults. So, a lot of people in the past have done tanning beds that can increase your risk of skin cancer, as well as just besides the risk of skin cancer, you've got the increased risk of aging, getting sunspots wrinkles, things like that. So accelerating your aging is, is another problem that people want to think of you know, down the road. So, you know, keeping away from the sun is, I guess, key for adults because we're very active or we are tend to be more than I think our parents are. We have more leisure time and all that stuff. But uh, even as children, I mean, that sun poisoning you got at 12 years old could come back to haunt you someday, couldn't it? Right, there is some relationship between the number of sunburns you got when you were a child and, mm -hmm. and, and your risk of skin cancer or sun damage when you're older. Um, there's, there's a lot of different data as far as whether it's the number of sunburns or whether it's just the exposure time. It's probably a combination of the two. And it depends obviously a little bit on you know, your skin type. But skin type, some people think skin type you know, can protect you totally, but even skin of color only gives you a, maybe a two, three, four, SPF, you know, mm -hmm. built in or natural sun protection. So it doesn't give you a total sun protection. That's why in some individuals, even with skin of color, that you can get a darkening in the neck where they'll be lighter on the trunk and then they'll be mm -hmm. darker in the neck and the face area. Just You've from been peeking. Sunburns. You've seen me apparently at the beach uh, because, you know, I, I was always one of those guys like, I'm dark. I've got that swarthy ethnic skin that I thought would protect me from the sun, but ooh, no, I, I burn no, quite you, readily. And, uh, and I've even had some, some black friends who said, yeah, I burn. So, you know, having dark skin doesn't necessarily protect you all that much. What is it, SPF three or four? Yeah, you're only getting like mm -hmm. a, about an SPF of maybe a three, maybe give you a five mm -hmm. at the most. So you, that just means that you can, you know, withstand more sun and less likely mm -hmm. to burn. But it doesn't mean, especially around here where we've got the beach and the, and the, the water, which are reflecting uh, a lot of the ultraviolet rays. And mm -hmm. some people are, are, are mistaken when they think that clouds will protect you. But a lot of times, clouds, the, the ultraviolet rays can still go just as much through the clouds and you can burn just as easily on a cloudy day. And sometimes there's some odd um, uh, events with the clouds where even it can actually increase the ultraviolet rays that you get. Isn't that something? Because I, I remember as a kid, we would spend all day in the pool and, and even on a cloudy day, it was like, ah, oh, we don't need any, you know, sun, we used to call it suntan lotion. Don't need any of that. It's cloudy and we're in the pool. So you feel cool. But you step out of that pool after a few hours, you get a burn right in the water. Right. You, can get, you still get burned, you know, in mm -hmm. a lot of things, even in the shade. You know, around here, a lot of things are reflective. The water, the white sand. Uh, you can get a sunburn and, and you can get a, a tan, you know, just sitting in the shade. So the New Year's resolutions would be check your skin, take care of your skin, moisturize it, and above all, protect it from the sun. Right, and if you have any concerns or any doubts, see a provider or see a dermatologist and get it checked. Dr. Ron Johnston from uh, Advanced Dermatology and Skin Care Center here in Panama City, thank you so much for coming on the show thank and you. helping us make our New Year's resolutions for our skin. And we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the show and Happy New Year. We have Serena Ortega here uh, in the studio who's gonna sing something for us. And at last, it's 2015. Serena, what are you going to sing for us today? I'm going to be singing At Last by Etta James because <laughs> here it is, 2015, At Last. At Last. Take it away. <laughs> At last, my love has come along. speak to 
a dream that I can call my own. I found a thrill to press my cheek to, a thrill that I have never known. Ooh, yeah, you smile. Oh, you smile. And then the spell was cast And here we are in heaven For you are mine At last Whoa At last, Happy New Year's.